There we go. Here's my second one. Let's clip this clip up there. It is great to see you. Welcome to our service from Holy Trinity. Uh, thank you very much for joining. If you're watching at home, welcome. You're really welcome. I know it's raining hard, and it might be that that's one of the reasons why you're not with us this morning. But for the chosen few who are here, well done for braving through the storm and coming here this morning. It's great. You're really welcome to our a harvest service. It is harvest and it's a little different to previous years uh, for all sorts of reasons, I know, but we're still going to make the most of it. Um, so uh, we will come on to what that means for us in a moment. Let me uh, go to my next PowerPoint slide. There we go. Great. Boys and girls, give me a wave. Hello, hello, boys and girls. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome. There is no Sunday club today because it's an all-age service, so you stay with us for the whole service today and look forward to that. You're really, really welcome. We've got some new faces. Welcome. You're really welcome. Uh, uh, if you've got any questions, we've got stewards at the back. They're the fountain of all knowledge. So if you've got any questions, go to them, okay, and they'll be able to tell you where to go. Things like toilets and all the rest of it, they will tell you what to do. Um, uh, we've got guests from the old fire station nursery today uh, and they've contributed, the boys and girls from the old fire station nursery in Englefield have contributed to our harvest gifts and you're really welcome, so thank you for coming. And um, well, if you're new, I'm Martin, I'm the rector and like I say, you're very welcome. Have I said that enough that you're welcome? I think I have, haven't I? Uh, what else is there to say? Uh, well, we're going to begin with a hymn. Now, we can't sing as uh, you uh, know, but we can hum very loudly. And um, our task is to compete with the choir. No, it's not. It's to join them in beautiful harmony. So can I invite the choir to come up? We've got um, uh, a selection uh, who are going to sing for us uh, this morning and help us to praise God for all the good things that we have and that we can enjoy. Please do be careful of the sheer amount of wires down here. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about that. We have a master plan to make all these wires magically disappear one day, but until that comes, oh, yep, yeah, sorry, <laughs> it's okay, until that comes, um, we have lots of wires down here. We plough the fields and scatter. It is a wonderful hymn which reminds us uh, that all the good things that we have, all the good things that we can enjoy, that we are blessed with, comes from the God of the universe. And so uh, do enjoy. Um, humming along, I'm going to... Uh, uh, where is it now? I'm going to take a little dongle. Where's my dongle? Where's my dongle? And I'm going to put the words on the screen so that we can see them and hum along with them. There we go. Marvellous. Thank you very much.
singing. Great stuff. Thank you very much for singing and opening our service with that wonderful hymn. What we are going to do now is stand and affirm our faith together. So please would you stand. You, um, what I didn't say uh, is that you should have all picked up one of these uh, pew sheets and on it are the words that we say together, um, but they also come up on the screen if you like that as well. Now, uh, these are uh, truths that Christians have believed um, down the ages, and they are a great encouragement to say these to one another. That's what we're doing. We're saying them to one another to encourage each other that we're not uh, walking through life alone in our faith, but we are in a, a family. Now, if you don't believe these truths, uh, please don't say them. Certainly don't want to put words in your mouth, but if you do believe them, then do say the words in bold with me. And so, do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please do sit down. We're working our way through Mark's Gospel at the moment. We're taking a pause today because it's harvest. Um, but uh, you will remember if you were here when we started Mark's Gospel that um, the uh, first recorded words from Jesus uh, in Mark chapter 1 and verse 14 and 15, or oh, verse 15, is this. The time has come, Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Repentance is when we do an about turn, when we stop going our way without reference to God and start going God's way. That's repentance. And the call, therefore, to repentance comes from Jesus' own lips. And so it is right now that we turn to God and we repent of our sins. We bring to mind and are honest with God the things that we've done that uh, we know has upset him and has gone against his will. And saying sorry and resolving not to do those things again by the help of his Holy Spirit. So, boys and girls, um, the, the words, the response is, Lord, we are sorry, okay? And your grown-ups can help you know when you need to say that if you want to pray this prayer with us, okay? So let us pray. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Lord, we are sorry for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Lord, we are sorry for failing you by what we do and think and say. Lord, we are sorry for letting ourselves be drawn away. Oops, sorry. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Lord, we are sorry for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Lord, we are sorry. Well, the wonderful news of the Bible is that when we do come in repentance and faith, we find forgiveness at the cross of Jesus, not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus has done. And so let me pray. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to uh, put on 
uh, the screen a video. Now this video is, um, uh, it's not the best sound quality, so sorry about that, I hope you get the gist. Uh, it is harvest, and um, harvest is a wonderful time for us to remember and reflect on what we've got and the blessings that we've got, and share that with other people, particularly, the, particularly those less uh, well off than ourselves. Well, we're supporting two uh, charities this year. We're supporting the food bank, and we support the food bank regularly, uh, but we're also supporting the church, uh, Churches in Reading Dropping Centre, which is a wonderful charity that supports homeless people. Now, let me show you a short video. So, hi, I'm Jake. We are Morelord. Today, we're at Serdic Churches in Reading Dropping Centre. So we're having an amazing day where we're pampering the homeless. So obviously a lot of these people, they sleep outside. Some of them don't even have access to water, but today they come in, get their hair done. We've got a fine dining chef in Maidenhead making uh, chili con carne for them today. Well, I'm Joelle and we're part of the Forgotten Feet charity. And we provide also podiatry treatment. And we're happy to, to come and make a difference for these people. Just seeing their smiles and their faces after it's finished, you know, it's, it's very rewarding at the end. A nice feeling. Yeah, it feels good. There's a good atmosphere. Everyone seems happy. Goodbye. I've come here today. I've had a little something to eat, a coffee. Got my feet sorted and I'm about to get my hair done hopefully. So yeah, I feel pretty I feel pretty good actually. It's just wonderful to have all these people here and then and having just what you and I would do normally. It's just just good. This place which I came here every day, I didn't know that it was courtesy and look, this is the result. One thing I have noticed about today is these people are coming in and really you can't recognise them when they walk out. They're having their, their feet done, their hair done, they've got new clothes, they look completely different. Check this out. So Mario from Five Centres, fine dining chef in Bray, has made us uh, chilli con carne for six people. Come and have a look how yummy it looks. And what, and what we're doing different today is normally the guys have to queue up with plastic knives and forks, a bit prison style -y. So what we've done is today is we're actually serving them. Uh, Danny and Greg from The Turtle have provided drinks for us, which is just amazing. Thank you, guys. And um, they're all being served rather than having to come up. So it's a pure pamper day. Everybody's got new clothes, they've had their hair done. Everybody's about to have some yummy food. It's quite satisfying, to be honest, seeing the guys really just enjoy that bit of luxury for the day. They seem like they're really in their element. We're providing them with all more Lord clothing, which actually we have to say a massive thanks to all you people out there because through your purchase, every time you purchase a hoodie from us, it actually clothes a, home per a, 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 a homeless person. So I'm going to give you a, give yourself a, a little pat on the back. So because of you, today's been actually put on. So thank you very much. I'm JD. We are more Lord. Ah. Brilliant. Well, that is a little glimpse to the church in Reading drop-in centre, and um, uh, one of the things that they're going to be doing with the, uh, the donations from today is making pat lunches. Um, it's, this happened when they could do something like that and provide a, a bit of a table service, but at the moment it's not um, so easy. But one of the things that um, they are going to be doing is providing pat lunches for the homeless, and um, uh, some of what you have donated today will be helping towards that. So wonderful stuff. Now, thank you. And we're going to pray. Uh, we can't bring our harvest gifts up, but we can still give thanks to God for the fact that he has blessed us and we can share that blessing with other people. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the God of all peoples of the earth for the colour and forms of your creation and our place within it, for our daily food and for those whose work and skill bring your good gifts to us. We thank you for the light and the shade of the changing seasons and their variety and dependability, for new life and growth out of barrenness and decay. And we thank you for the life we have been given and for all those whom you have given us to share it. We bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Amen. We are going to sing. Uh, so let me go back to my... Details here. There we go. Right, this is going to start immediately, so I need to stop it. No, nope, stop. Stop, 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 stop. There we go. <laughs> 
Um, all things bright and beautiful, we know this one. Now, um, if you haven't been joining us over the last few weeks, you won't know, or you might know about Makaton, but if you don't know about Makaton, Makaton is a, 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 a style of sign language used for uh, young people and those whose communication needs some help. And we've been using Makaton over the last few weeks so that we can sing with our hands because we can't sing with our lips. So uh, give it a go. These, uh, the actions, the, the sign isn't, uh, isn't complicated. Uh, so give it a go and uh, let's stand and let's sing this together. And it's an American track, so I apologise for the American accent. <laughs> there we go. Right. Beautiful, beautiful signing, everybody. Do please sit down. Brilliant. Oh, great. Um, you're getting good at that. Brilliant stuff. And if, for those of you who don't know, that's uh, Becky, Becky George, who's doing the signing for us. And um, we interviewed her last week. And if you'd like to see that interview, you can go onto, um, uh, uh, onto our YouTube page and you can see the service from last week and you can see that interview, which was lovely to hear from her. Now then, uh, let's have a look at some notices. So, like I said, when you came in, you got one of these pew sheets. And um, in this, you've got some uh, notices to look at. I'll tell you what, let me um, use this. What is there to say? Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, uh, we continue in Mark's Gospel, so do come back for that. Uh, we've got two more sermons, I think it is, in Mark's Gospel. Um, I should know I planned it, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, two more sermons, I think, in Mark's Gospel before we start looking at the book of Ruth. Uh, so look forward to that. But um, until then, this is a really helpful time in, uh, to, to look at Mark's Gospel because we come to the end of the middle of Mark's Gospel. And I don't mean the sort of the perfect middle as in the middle of a book, but Mark's Gospel is split into two halves and the next two round off the first half and they're not to be missed. So do come for that. Sunday Club. Oh, how fun. Sunday Club will be meeting in the 
old school building. Um, because of some very kind uh, donations, we have been able to now rent the old school building from when this, from the, you know, the old primary school. We're very grateful because what were we going to do? for our young people with this rain and this weather. So it is a wonderful answer to prayer. I've been giving thanks for that. Um, and uh, please give thanks as well. Church Family Prayer Meeting is this Wednesday at 2 o'clock. So if you're already coming to our home group at 2 o'clock on a Wednesday, this is just an extension of that, so it would be great to see you. If, you're free, if you find yourself free at 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock on Zoom, please do come. Um, if you, it, it might be that you think, I, I just not used to praying out loud but that's okay you don't have to pray out loud join in there's lots to pray for and you can be joining in in your heart but it's a really important thing i've said it before it's the engine room of church life um oops that went did it go on yeah it's the engine room of church life so do come if you can on your pews you should find i've got so many things here uh you should find uh, one of these which is uh, an invitation to Christianity Explored. We're, we're full now for the, for the courses, the two courses that we're running th uh, at the moment, but we will start another one, most likely at the end of October. And so if you would like to join in with that next time round, fill it in. There's a little box at the back, or a little white box at the back, where you can post it, and then uh, someone will contact you about the next Christianity Explored course. A great way to investigate Christianity. No question is too big or too small. Um, uh, you get to dig into who Jesus is and look at the evidence for yourself. Uh, and it is a, it's, it's worth doing. It's worth doing. Um, what else have you got um, on your pew sheet? Uh, on your pew, you've got this welcome card. Uh, if you want to find out anything more about Holy Trinity, you want someone to contact you, maybe on you. Whoops. Um, again fill out the back and pop it into the uh, post box at the back of the church, uh, just, in, just next to the, the video camera that's recording at the moment. So that's where these go. Um, you've got uh, also some of these, uh, Hope Beyond Coronavirus, these little tracks. We've got loads of these. We've got some at the back of church and we've got lots in the pew. Please take one and have a look. If you've got someone who you think it would be really helpful for them to, 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 to think this through as well, um, why not take a few? You're really welcome. Um, take, a, take a handful. Um, maybe you have neighbours and you'd love for them to know Jesus. Um, and uh, this is an easy way to do that. So take a bunch. If you want more, speak to me. I've got lots. And uh, if you haven't seen the Parish Magazine yet, we've got some at the back of church still. Um, I know these were posted, but if you'd like to have a look, there's a Parish Magazine. Oh, there's a lot to say, isn't there? Um, Explore. Uh, the Bible reading notes for October to December is out and um, if you want to purchase it, uh, you go to the Good Book Company, uh, there's, uh, there's Good Book Company at the bottom. Um, just type in the Good Book Company, it's a wonderful Christian bookseller online and um, you can get yours. Uh, really helpful Bible reading um, for each day, um, spending a few minutes each day looking at the Bible at the moment, it is in Habakkuk. And it's a really helpful one because it sounds asking the question or you're delving into the question of why is there suffering in the world? So that's really worth doing. Ooh, okay, last, last notice. <laughs> you have to go and watch the video again so you know which no what the notices are because we've got so many. But this is an important one. Operation Christmas Child. I think this, is, this might have been done before my time. No? Okay, this, this is a shoebox. And I've made this from the flat pack boxes at the back. Um, let me show you a short video actually, and this will explain it a bit better. The children are completely overjoyed. It's a real celebration. So many smiles on their faces. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name. And that's what this is all about. It's its wonderful way to enter into the Christmas spirit in its true meaning. Operation Christmas Child has grown hugely over 30 years since it started in a small town in the UK. And has now snowballed into this enormous global movement. That's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders, it knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. 
lives are being changed. All over the world, it's brilliant. Operation Christmas Child uh, comes from a charity called Samaritan's Purse. And the idea is that uh, these Christmas presents, which they'll be, go around the world to children who, uh, it might be their only Christmas present that year, um, uh, but even one, more wonderfully than that, they get to find out more about Jesus. So they get a present. They also get to hear the gospel as well. And um, we, we find out later on in 2021 uh, where our gifts went, which country they went to. Um, it's a great thing to do. And what we're going to do in, um, oh, let me tell you when, the 15th of November, let me put that online, the 15th of November, we're going to have a shoebox service where we bring our shoe boxes that we filled with presents for the, for the little ones and, and then we send them off um, to Samaritan's Purse who ship them around the world. If you would like to be involved in that, you're very welcome. Pick up a shoe box at the back of church. You don't just have to pick it up today. We will, we will have them over the next few weeks. Where Nick is standing, give us a, a wave, Nick. Hello, Nick. Where Nick is standing, uh, he's pointing to the shoe boxes and along with the shoe box, there's a little uh, piece of paper which um, gives you sort of advice and the kind of things you can buy for these young people and you can sort of specify whether it's for a boy or a girl. It's a really good thing to do, boys and girls can decorate it, they like a, a nice decorated shoebox and it's just a really great thing to do, I can't sell it highly enough. So there we are, uh, fi- uh, we've bought the boxes, if you can, 50p for a box, just put it into the little box at the back, if you can't, don't worry at all about it, it's much more important that we fill the boxes, okay? So brilliant. Okay, they are the notices. They are the longest notices ever. We're going to look at the Bible now, and Margaret is going to read for us. Thank you, Margaret. Now, in your pew sheet, you will find the Bible reading. You'll see it on page two, Psalm 67, and it's also on the screen if you want to follow along. Thank you, Margaret, very much indeed. Brilliant. Let me just get myself sorted out here. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant, we're going to think about that passage. So lovely to see you all, everyone. Let us pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word, the Bible. Thank you that we can think about it now. Uh, We pray, Lord, that as uh, uh, this is our harvest service, you would help us to see how this speaks into today for us and how we can respond in a way that doesn't just uh, uh, honour and glorify your name, but reaches out to the world with the good news of salvation offered through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. So it's harvest. It's harvest. Brilliant. A time to give thanks, a time to offer what we have um, to other people who have not. Um, all sorts of reasons why we, um, we give food, why we have collections of food and things like that. It's brilliant. Well, I want to show you two reasons from our passage today why harvest is a good thing why we have harvest, why we collect food and give to other people. Um, Here's the first reason. God is king. God is king. Margaret, thank you very much for reading for us. I want you to notice, I think I've got this on the screen actually. Yeah, I want you to notice, and you've got this on your pew sheet, um, a verse, verse four, there's verse four. It is in the middle, and it is the heart of this psalm. 
And uh, it, literally, so you'll notice, uh, uh, particularly uh, grown-ups, you'll notice that either ver the verses on either side, verse 3 and verse 5, they're the same, aren't they? And then uh, verses 1 and 2 and verses 6 and 7, they make the same point. So you've got a sandwich. And this happens every now and again in the Bible. You get a sandwich verse which shows that it's the main thrust of the passage. And verse 4 is the main thrust of Psalm 67. And it's wonderful. Um, it tells us what God is like. It tells us what God is like. Before we think about what God is like, let me tell you about somebody who lived a thousand years ago. His name was King Canute. Anyone heard of King Canute before? Um, very wise king. Um, king Canute. Everyone liked King Canute. Well, his subjects. They thought he was amazing. And they kept telling him, you're amazing, King, you're amazing. Anyone want to, no, no, um, what we need to do right now is turn around to each other and just as, uh, as uh, we're not, well, we can't say things too loudly because that's not allowed. But just turn around and just tell uh, the person next to you how amazing they are. Go on. Brilliant. You're amazing. You're amazing. You are amazing. You're made by the God of the universe. You're not just random atoms. God loves you. God made you. Now, it's absolutely true that King Canute is amazing. He, well, he was a thousand years ago. But here was the problem. All the people who worked for him kept telling him that he was so amazing that he, he couldn't have any faults. He couldn't have any problems. So they were saying things like, you're amazing, there is nothing in the world that would disobey you, King. And King Canute thought, really? And they'd say, yeah, King, you're so amazing, nothing would dare say no to you. And the King would say, really? And they would say, yes, yes, you could control the water, the wind and the waves. And King Canute said, okay, let's go to the beach. Anyone like going to the beach? I like going to the beach, it's great. Now, King Canute went to the beach and he said, because this is how kings lived in those days, he said, bring me my chair, because you know, you can't go anywhere without your chair. So he took his chair and he sat down. And then he stood up and he said, actually, take my chair right to the edge of the surf, right to the edge of the water. So they did, and he sat down. And he turned to all the people who said he was amazing and he said, am I amazing? They said, yes, you're amazing. He said, can I? Can anything say no to me? And they said, no, nothing can say no to you. And so he sat down and he said, waves, stop. What do you think happened? Yeah? The waves didn't stop. You're absolutely right. His feet got wet. His robes got wet and he said something really nice. Let me say it again. Let me, uh, let me find it. Uh, he said, learn a lesson from what you've seen. There is only one king who is all powerful and it is he who rules the sea and holds the ocean in the hollow of his hand. It is he whom you ought to praise and serve above all others. So he demonstrated to all his flattering servants that he had no control over the elements. And he said, only God can control the elements. I wonder if that's true. You know, you are so lucky because if this wasn't sort of coronavirus time, someone would be up here right now and you'd be feeling very nervous. As it is, we have to rely on Fabian. So, Feel very lucky. Fabian? Yeah? Are you feeling lucky? What do you mean? Well, oh, say hello, by the way. Hello! Say hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, Fabian. Lovely to see you. You too. Um, Fabian, uh, are you feeling lucky? Hmm, not sure. I need you to help us because we've seen that there's a king called King Canute, yeah? and King Canute knew that only God could control the waves. Oh, wait. Right. Only God could control the water. And so we're now going to think about whether or not I can have the power. I'm feel I've had two cups of coffee this morning. I'm feeling mighty. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so you sit here. And um, now here's the thing, Fabian. If you don't want to go ahead with this, all you have to do is say so. I can't hear him. Isn't that great? 
Now then, Fabian, what, uh, what we're going to do, I've got some water here. Whoops. And, uh, no, I've got a glass, rather. Let me fill it with some water. There we are, here's my glass. Fill it with some water. I'm feeling powerful. Two cups of coffee. I'm shaking, actually. Much too much caffeine. Okay, there we go. Right. There's my water. Fabian. Yeah. Oh, very good. He did it with his mouth closed. Um, Fabian, yeah. I'm going to pour this water over your head, but I'm going to tell the water to stop. All I've got is this, this flimsy piece of paper. What do you reckon? Do you think this flimsy piece of paper is going to stop this water going on Fabian's head? You don't. Shall we give it a go? I'm feeling very powerful. I'm going to put the water here. Okay. And, oh, I should have... <laughs> I've got a bucket just in case. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Let's put the bucket. Okay, now Fabian, here we go. This, this, um, piece, of, um, this piece of paper is going to stop the water going over your head, okay? Shall we give it a go? Ready? One, two, three. What? Do you want to know something? It's just a science experiment. I'm not really that powerful. That is something that you'll learn in science in a few years. It's great. It's the only thing I learned in science. I was hopeless. But hey, that was just a science experiment. It's not true. I can't control the water. Of course I can't. Only God can. Oh, well done, Fabian. Thank you. You can go back to bed. OK, bye. Bye, Fabian. Good stuff. Right. Are you lucky that you couldn't get picked for that, by the way? That could have gone horribly wrong, couldn't it? Good stuff. Now, well, there we are. I could try and control the water. I could do a science experiment and try and see more powerful, but actually, I can't do it. Only God is the God of nature. Only God is the one who is king. So if you go back to our passage, oh, no, that's too much. You have to look down at your passage. If you go back to our passage, verse four of Psalm 67, what does it say? May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. We read that God is a king, but not just a king of one place. He's a king of the earth, the king of the nations, the king over all, the king of kings. And this king of kings is king over the harvest. King over the harvest. So have a look at verse 6. It's a bit small though, isn't it? But if you've got your piece of paper, you can have a look down. Uh, let me read it. Verse 6. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. So, what do we see there? The psalmist, the person who wrote this song, because the, the psalms are the songs of the Bible, the person who wrote this psalm wouldn't have gone up to a human king and said, oh king, you are so powerful, you can control the elements. No, they know that God is the God of the universe and he is the one in control of the sun and the stars and the, the water and all the rest of it. The psalmist knew that when food was available, the harvest, when food was available, it was because of God and he should thank God. And that's an important lesson for us all, isn't it? There are so many people we can thank along the way when we have food on our table. So just go out, go and shout out at me. Who can we thank? When we have food on our plates, who can we thank for it? God? Philip? <laughs> I heard that. Brilliant. Jesus? Who else? Farmers. Farmers? Keep going. Shopkeepers? Manufacturers? Lorry drivers, there are so many people we can thank, and we should, shouldn't we? We should be thankful for them. We should be really thankful for them, especially right now, because we've got a lot of people working, and they've been working a long time during the height of coronavirus, and they've been quite nervous, but if they weren't working, there wouldn't be food on our plates. We've got to be very, very thankful, haven't we? But of course, um, God is the great provider, and first and foremost, it all comes from Him. He's the one who makes the crops grow. Now, it is important, though, for us to remember at harvest time that we're painfully aware that there are people with very little. We might have food on our plate, but there are people with very little in the world. And we, uh, we do well to ask the question, how does that work? How can God be the God of the harvest, and yet there are people without? And the answer is in our psalm. It's in verse 1. It's in verse 2, and it's in verse 7. Let me read them. 
May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. That's verse one and two. And then verse seven says, may God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Now that, um, that word fear, it's not a cowering sort of a fear like I, I'm scared of God. It's an ultimate respect knowing who God is and he is the God of creation. And the point is this, when we are blessed by God, when we receive good things, that blessing should never stop with us. That's the point. It should extend past us so that others are able to give thanks to the God who provides. We live in a world with changing tectonic plates. We live in a world where some parts of the world are wetter than other parts of the world. And we live in parts of the world, uh, or, or there are parts of the world, hotter than other parts of the world. And an important way we can help others to enjoy what other parts of the world enjoy is to share. It's a little bit like going to a party. Now, boys and girls, if you went to a party and you, um, uh, it was the end of the party, what would you expect to get? Or what would you like to get? A po- what did you say? A party bag, yes, yes. Here's my party bag, my, uh, my Disney princess. This is, if you came to my party, this is what you'd get. Yes, yes, here we've got, we've got Ariel, we've got, um, I, don't, I don't know who they are actually. Uh, anyway, here we are. My, now, what would, you, what would you expect to get inside? Cake. Yes, yes, here's my Disney princess napkin. Yes. And inside the napkin might be wrapped a piece of cake. What else might you expect to get? Pardon? Balloons. Balloons. Yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> yes, but absolutely, balloons. Yeah, anything else? Some sweets, yes. Oh, I ate them already. And, and maybe a toy. Here's my toy. Here's my toy. This guy lives in my study. Martin Luther. Anyway, there we go. Right, good. You're absolutely right. Now, here's the thing. You went to a party. You got a party bag. It wasn't your party. You went to a party and it was someone else's birthday, but you got to share in something. How wonderful is that? How wonderful that someone was kind enough to take the joy of their day and extend that joy to you. Wonderful. It's a little bit like that with Harvest. It's a little bit like that with the verses we've seen here. May God be gracious to us. Why? So that others in the world can know the joy that we've received. Harvest is a time for us to say, yes, we've been blessed greatly and we can give thanks. But we don't keep those blessings to ourselves. We share them, don't we? And I want to encourage you. uh, Now, uh, boys and girls, you're listening very well. Grown-ups, I want to encourage you to... um, No, party. I want to encourage you to think about... um, well, that comes, came out a bit weird, but never mind. To, to think about charities like Tear Fund. The very reason Tear Fund exists is to relieve poverty in the world. And so it's, it's some, something that we should be thinking of. Yes, we give to the local church because we want people to know about Jesus. We give at harvest time, we give to the food bank. But we need to be thinking about this, don't we? How can we extend the joy that we've received with those who have not? Brilliant. So God is king over the harvest. Let me go to my notes because I'm sure I've got something else to say. Um, Oh, of course. And here's the final thing I want to say is this. We've got a great example. We've got a great example of someone who gave and wanted others to um, experience an end of poverty. And that person is Jesus. You see, Jesus, he knew that we come empty-handed before the God of the universe. He knows that. He knew that we cannot pay our way out of our problems. He knew that we cannot pay our way uh, from turning our back on God, what the Bible calls sin. We can't pay our way. He knew that we came in poverty before the God of the universe. So Jesus shared his life. He shared his love. He shared his forgiveness with us. And because of that, We can experience eternal joy with the God of the universe. Not because we deserved it, but because Jesus shared with those who he loved. It's a great challenge for us, isn't it? We've got a great example in the Lord Jesus Christ. At harvest time, we remember God is king. He's the king of kings over the harvest. And the blessings that we have, they shouldn't be there to make us declare, look how much I've got, but how much can I share? Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, thank you so much for harvest time. Thank you that we can share with others. But we want to pray this morning that you would help us uh, to move away, uh, if we need to, from only thinking um, about giving at specific times of the year, but to be thinking about how we can help others experience the joy and the blessings that we've got. Uh, Help us to see Jesus as the great example of this when he shared his life and his love and his forgiveness so that we can experience eternal joy with you. And we thank you for the Lord Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Are you still sitting there feeling thankful that you didn't have to sit underneath my water? (laughs) Yes. I've tried that once before and it worked. One of these days. Oh, crumbs. Okay, we are going to turn to prayer, everyone. And so on the screen is the Lord's Prayer. And you also have it in your pew sheet as well on page three. So before Valerie comes and leads us in our prayers, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to pray the prayer of the day, also on the screen or um, on your pew sheet. Let's pray this together. Gracious God, you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to put the microphone here for the recording. Bear with me. Brilliant. Thank you, Father. this harvest time, we give you thanks for all the good things that you provide for us throughout the year. We pray for all who work so that we have food to eat and to share. We remember the farmers, both in this country and overseas, who work so hard to get their produce to us. We pray also for the fishermen who fight wind and waves to land their catch safely. We remember too those in the transport, distribution and retail sectors For without them, our shop and supermarket shelves would be empty. We pray that all trade between peoples and nations may be done openly and fairly and with due regard for the environment and for human dignity. Merciful God, we pray for peace in our troubled world. Wherever nations are at war and people are suffering, we pray for true reconciliation. We pray for those who struggle against injustice, those who have to live in violent and oppressive societies, and for those for whom hunger is a daily reality. We also pray for our national and community leaders and for those in public office, especially those who are responsible for making difficult decisions about how best to control the spread of COVID-19. And now, from the Care Prayer Diary, We pray for the wonders of creation. Creator God, today is World Animal Day, and we praise you for the rich variety and beauty of the animal world. We cannot count the millions of species and those yet to be discovered. Please prosper every initiative that preserves, protects, and cares for these precious creatures. Lord, may we increasingly work in harmony with Earth's national restorative processes to counter the effects of exploitation and climate change on many ecosystems and species. Grant success to projects that value resources, reduce pollution and waste, and protect wildlife. Loving God, we pray now for the 800,000 Christians living in Iran, 
where an ethnic Persian who leaves Islam can face the death penalty or imprisonment for crimes against national security. And it's illegal to produce Christian literature or hold services in Farsi. Despite all this, we praise you that the Christian church is growing. In addition, coronavirus has hit Iran hard, possibly 20 times worse than the official figures. The economic situation is dire, with inflation making even fruit unaffordable. We pray that aid might get through to this stricken country to ease the suffering. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Valerie. Oh, turn your microphone on. Thank you, Valerie, very much indeed. Can I invite the choir to come back up to the front? Please, again, be careful of the, uh, the wires, please. Makes me very nervous. <clears throat> well, uh, we're coming to a close of our service, uh, but not, of course not before we sing uh, that great harvest hymn, Come, ye thankful people, come. It's a reminder uh, to us uh, that a harvest is not simply about reaping of crops, but the fact that God has promised a day of harvest when the Lord Jesus Christ will return to take those who are his home. And that is the theme of this song, this hymn. So uh, do hum along, won't you? Oh, good humming, by the way, in the first hymn. Sounded great. So keep it up. Come up, ye thankful people, come.
Wonderful. Thank you very much for singing that for us. Oops. Thank you very much for singing that for us and leading us there. Um, we are going to close with a, a prayer. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, it's raining, which is a bit grim, isn't it? And um, I will stand at the back and I will say goodbye. And it might be that you head straight home and that is totally understandable. Um, and we look forward to a day when we can mill around in church again. But anyway, that is how it is. Um, let me pray. And then we'll close. God, the Father, who created the world, give you grace to be wise stewards of his creation. God, the Son, who redeemed the world, inspire you to go out as laborers into his harvest field. God, the Holy Spirit, whose breath fills the whole of creation, challenge us and comfort us all our days and bring us at last safe to your harvest home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.